the hard truth to swallow is that if you take a walk downtown, one in six persons that you will meet either has cancer, knows someone who has cancer, or have had some sort of experience with cancer. Cancer is a devastating disease. It does not discriminate. As a matter of fact, according to the World Health Organization and the American Cancer Society, by the end of 2020, about 15 million people worldwide will be diagnosed with cancer. Last year alone, cancer claimed the life of 10 million people worldwide. Now, this devastating news occurs despite the incredible technological advances that has taken place in the development of the various treatment modalities as well as medical imaging techniques in the past decade. So this begs the question, if we have advanced this much and we have achieved this much, why is cancer still a public health problem? To begin to answer this question, we need to understand fundamentally what a tumor is made of. We need to understand fundamentally how radiation interacts with matter. Because the objective or the mission of my thesis in the medical physics program at Creighton University is really to develop alternative modalities that does two important things that increases the treatment outcomes without the terrible side effects that comes with those escalation in radiation therapy. Because the job, the essential duty of a radiation oncology medical physicist is to ensure that we deliver a maximum dose to the tumor but at the same time minimize the amount of dose received by the surrounding um, tissue at risk as well as the surrounding healthy tissue. But in an effort to maximize the dose in order to kill these cancer cells, we also harm healthy body tissues. So how can we solve this dynamic problem? Our research in the physics department at Creighton University in turns to use nanoparticles, carefully engineered nanoparticles to increase the local dose delivered to a tumor without increasing the radiation dose given to the patient. And how is this achieved? You see, a quantum dot possesses unique optoelectronic properties as well as unique physical phys physical chemical properties that make them unique for this particular purpose. They are so small that you could fit about a hundred thousand quantum dots within the diameter of a human hair. The ultra smallness of their size implies that they can quickly be engulfed through endocytosis by the human cell into a given tumor. One thing you need to bear in mind is that a tumor is simply a group of cells that have a runaway mitosis. In other words, they are dividing so fast, so rapidly, more than other body tissues that they have become a problem. And because they are dividing so fast and so rapidly, they also need nutrients to accomplish these tasks. And as a result, with the properties of quantum dots, we are able to engineer these molecules to be engulfed by cells. In doing so, we hypothesize that the presence of specific quantum dots within a tumor increases the local dose. And here is why. Now, when radiation interacts with matter, it, do, it does so in one or two ways. It can either interact directly in which <clears throat> the secondary electrons it releases 
either interact with macromolecules within the cells such as the DNA, proteins or lipid molecules and disrupt the cell cycle, or it does so by hydrolyzing water. In other words, it can either break down the water molecules into an H+, which is acidic, or an OH-, which is basic. This changes the chemical properties of the medium within which the macromolecules are found in such a way that it makes it difficult for cancer cells to grow. And therefore, we have proven that the presence of quantum dots within a cell increases these hydrolytic processes within the cell. And as a result, more reactive chemical species will be produced that would disrupt the growth of tumors. And this is the basic premise of my thesis. So in order for us to measure or quantitatively assess the production of rust in cells, we developed a novel essay where we were able through by observing the fluorescent intensity of quantum dots in the presence of rust and the fluorescent intensity of quantum dots in the absence of rust, we found out that the presence of rust actually decreases significantly the fluorescent intensity of quantum dots, which means that when a cell is irradiated, without quantum dots, and when the cell is radiated with quantum dots, we can look at the fluorescent intensity of the quantum dots in the medium to know quantitatively the amount of rust produced. And consecutively, the presence of quantum dots improves or increases or enhances the production of rust within a tumor cells. So our hope is that we will be able to engineer these molecules to incorporate these mole molecules within a tumor prior to radiation therapy. So the presence of these nanoparticles within a tumor will increase the production of oxygen reactive species which will disrupt the growth processes within the tumor cells and as a result arrest the cell growth. And in so doing, we will not only increase the local dose to the tumor while sparing the surrounding healthy tissues, but we will also minimize the amount of radiation given to the patient in the course of radiation therapy. And radiation therapy is important because more than 70% of all cancer patients in the course of their treatment undergo radiation therapy. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this talk.